Hi everyone, welcome. If you are new, please consider subscribing. My name is Yari and I create educational videos for beauty professionals who are in training and for those who like to continue learning. You guys, well, if you are here because you are currently studying for your state board written exam, you have found a perfect video. If you are looking to review electricity state board terms, then this will definitely help you get a little review in before your test. Please remember that information is not limited to what is shown in this video. I always advise all students to always go back and read that textbook when needed. And as always, if you find the information helpful, give this video a like, share it with a friend, Feel free to scan the QR code to connect with me. Follow me on all social media platforms as Glam and Beyond. Now with that said, good luck on your test. Hope you stay until the end. Now let's get started. Number one, what is an active electrode? The definition of an active electrode is that it is the electrode that is used directly on the client's skin during a facial treatment. Now, I'm going to be reading the definition for you guys, but also giving you some more insight on some of these terms. So for example, in electrotherapy treatment like galvanic or high frequency, there are always two electrodes. One is active and one is inactive. The active electrode is the one that the esthetician moves or applies on the treatment area to deliver the electrical current. So for example, if you're doing a galvanic treatment, the electrode you use to perform disincrustation, for example, or iontophoresis on the client's face is the active electrode, while the one the client holds is the inactive electrode. Number two, alternating current. An electric current that changes direction back and forth many times per second. That would be alternating current. This is the type of electricity that comes from wall outlets. It flows first in one direction, then switches to the opposite direction repeatedly. So for example, machines like high frequency, microcurrent devices, blow dryers, flat irons, or curling iron uses alternating current because it's safer and works well for beauty equipment that needs quick energy changes. Alternating current. Number three, ampere, also known as an amp. An ampere measures the amount of strength of electric current flowing through a wire. Think of it like the volume of water flowing through a hose. The higher the amps, the stronger the flow of electricity. So for example, a high frequency machine or blow dryer needs a certain number of amps to work properly. Too many amps on one circuit can trip a breaker, just like too much water pressure can burst a water hose. Number four, catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction without changing itself or being used up. Catalysts help products or treatments work faster or more effectively. They don't become part of the end result. They just help the process happen a lot quicker. So for example, for an esthetician, when doing an enzyme facial, the enzyme acts as a catalyst to speed up the breakdown of dead skin cells, giving smoother skin faster. For a cosmetologist, in hair coloring, heat or certain ingredients act as catalysts to speed up the reaction between hair color and developer, helping the color process more quickly. For nail technicians, in gel nails, the UV or LED lamp acts as a catalyst to cure and harden the gel by speeding up the chemical reaction in the product. Number five, circuit breaker. A circuit breaker is a safety device that automatically shuts off the flow of electricity when the current becomes too strong or overloaded. 
It protects people and electrical equipment from overheating, fires, or shocks. When too many tools or machines are plugged into one circuit, the breaker trips to stop the electricity until it's reset. So for example, if you plug in several facial machines at once and the power suddenly goes off, the circuit breaker has stripped to prevent overheating or damage. Number six, complete electric circuit. A complete electric circuit is a closed path through which electric current flows from the power source through the device and back again. For electricity to work, the path must be unbroken like a full circle. If the circuit is broken or open, electricity cannot flow and the device will not turn on. So for example, when you turn on a high frequency machine, the current flows through the wires, the electrodes and back to the machine, forming a complete circuit. Number seven, direct current. Direct current is electricity that flows in only one direction and is produced by chemical means. So further explanation would be, unlike alternating current, which switches direction, direct current flows steadily from the negative to the positive pole. It's commonly used in beauty devices that require controlled, gentle, and penetrating currents. Number eight, fuse. A fuse is a safety device that protects electrical circuits by melting and breaking the flow of electricity when too much current passes through. It contains a thin wire that heats up and melts if the circuit is overloaded. This stops the electricity and prevents fires or equipment damage. Once a fuse blows, it must be replaced. Unlike a circuit breaker, it can be reset. So for example, if your electric nail file or steamer stops working, it could be due to a blown fuse inside the device protecting it from damage. Number nine, grounding. Grounding means connecting an electrical current safely so that that extra electricity has somewhere to go instead of causing shock or damage. Grounding protects both you and your equipment by sending any stray electrical current safely into the ground. It's a key part of electrical safety, especially in salons and spas where water and electricity are often near each other. So for example, your facial machines or blow dryers have a three prong plug. That third prong is for grounding to protect you and the client from electric shock. Number 10, ground fault interrupter. A ground fault interrupter is a safety device that shuts off electricity instantly if it detects an imbalance or a potential shock. So like for example, when electricity is flowing where it shouldn't basically. It's designed to protect people from electric shock, especially in areas with water like salons and spas and bathrooms. If the GFI senses even a tiny leak of electricity, for example, through water or a person, it immediately cuts the power. Example, outlets near your facial sink or steamer area should have a GFI outlet to prevent shock if water splashes near the equipment. Number 11, electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is the range of all types of energy or light, waves that travel through space, including both visible and invisible kinds of light. It includes everything from radio waves, which the longest and weakest, to gamma rays, the shortest and strongest. Only a small part of this spectrum called visible light can be seen by the human eye. In the beauty industry, we mostly deal with 
visible light, infrared light, and ultraviolet UV light. Number 12, infrared light. Infrared light is a type of invisible light with longer wavelengths, deeper penetration, less energy, and more heat production than visible light. Even though you can't see infrared light, you can feel its warmth. It's commonly used in skin care and salon treatments to stimulate the skin, soften tissue, and help product absorption better. Infrared light works on the surface and slightly deeper layers of the skin. Infrared light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum just below red visible light. It's invisible to the human eye, but felt as heat. It has longer wavelengths than visible light, which allows it to penetrate deeper into the skin, reaching the dermis layer to help the blood flow and relaxation. I hope you're still with me. We're on number 13, invisible light. An invisible light is light that our eyes cannot see, but it's still part of the electromagnetic spectrum and carries energy. Even though we can't see invisible light, it affects the skin in important ways. The two main types used or discussed in beauty and aesthetics are infrared light, which gives heat, increases circulation, and relaxes muscles. Next, Ultraviolet UV light has shorter wavelengths that can disinfect or tan the skin, but hey, remember, it must be used carefully because too much can damage skin cells. Number 14, visible light. Visible light is the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can actually see with our eyes. It includes all the colors of the rainbow. Visible light makes up only a small part of the total light energy that reaches us from the sun, but it's the light our eyes detect. Each color has a different wavelength. Red has the longest wavelength, but less energy. Violet has the shortest wavelength, but more energy. In beauty industry, visible light is used for color treatments like LED therapy and understanding how light affects skin and hair color. Example, estheticians use LED therapy with visible colors like red for aging, blue for acne, or green for pigmentation. Each color penetrates the skin differently. By the way, I am aware that this is the part of the book no one ever likes to go over and really study for. But hey, if you're prepping for that state board exam, you definitely need to review this information just to feel better about it. Number 15, ultraviolet UV light. So ultraviolet light is an invisible light that comes from the sun and has shorter wavelengths than visible light. It carries more energy and kill bacteria, but also damage the skin if you are overexposed. So UV light is divided into three types. UVA, which is known as the aging rays, which has the longest wavelength, penetrates deep into the skin, causing wrinkles and aging. Next, we have UVB, also known as the burning rays. Medium wavelength causes sunburn and plays a role in skin cancer. And lastly, UVC, shortest wavelength, most dangerous, but it's blocked by the Earth's ozone layer. Number 16, inverter. What's an inverter? An inverter is a device that changes direct current okay, like the kind from a battery, into alternating current, which is what most salon equipment uses. Because most beauty tools and machines are designed to run on alternating current power, the type from wall outlets and inverter allows equipment to work even when the power source is direct current, such as from a portable battery, generator, or backup system. During an event or outdoor setup, an inverter generator can power tools like blow dryers or flat irons safely. Number 17, kilowatt. 
A kilowatt is a unit of electrical power equal to 1,000 watts. It tells you how much electricity a device uses or produces over time. Think of watts as the strength of electricity a device uses, and kilowatts are just 1,000 times that. The higher the kilowatt rating, the more energy the device consumes. This helps determine power needs and electricity cost in salons and spas. Number 18, milliampere. A milliampere is 1,000 of an ampere and measures very small amounts of electric current. Some beauty devices, especially those used on the skin, use very low current for safety. Milliampere units lets us measure tiny, precise currents that are strong enough to be effective but safe for clients. Number 19, non-conductor, also known as an insulator. A non-conductor is a material that does not allow electricity to pass through it. Non-conductors are also called insulators. They protect people from electric shock because they block the flow of electricity. Common non-conductors are materials like rubber, glass, silk, and plastic. Number 20, ohm. An ohm is a unit that measures electrical resistance, how much a material slows down or resists the flow of electricity. Think of it like water flowing through a pipe. A narrow or blocked pipe resists the water flow. Similar to a high resistant material reduces the flow of electricity, while low resistance material let it pass easily. Number 21, volt. A volt is a unit that measures the force or pressure of electricity, how strongly the current is pushed through a conductor. Think of electricity like water flowing through a hose. The volt is like the water pressure that pushes the flow. Higher volt means more force pushing the electric current. 22, watt. A watt measures how much electrical power a device uses. It's a combination of volts, which is pressure, and amperes, which is current. Think of it like how fast water flows through a hose under pressure. More watts means the device uses more electricity to do its work. Well, you guys, that concludes this short electricity state board terminology review. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Share it with someone who you believe could find all of this information helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thank you again for watching and thank you for your continued support. Find me on all social media platforms as Glam and Beyond. Feel free to scan the QR code to stay connected with me. You guys, as always, let's keep going, let's keep growing, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.